In this section, I'm going to go through some angular projectile motion problems in a, in, in a practice section I have um, and a worksheet that some of you might have. First one, Matt Ryan's throwing a football to Julio Jones. He throws it with initial speed of 25 meters per second, and it's an angle of 35 degrees above the horizontal. And this question just asks for the horizontal component of the football's velocity. So you have to draw a little quick picture of what's going on. You have 25 meters at a 35 degree, 35 degree angle above the horizon, and they're asking you for the horizontal component. So this is going to be important right here. What the question is actually asking for is asking you for that. So therefore, you have an adjacent and a hypotenuse. That's going to lead you to adjacent hypotenuse. It's going to be a cosine function. So you plug in your, your digits. Once again, make sure you're in degrees and not radians here. If you're in radians, you're going to get a different answer. And the answer here is 20.48 meters per second. And that was the initial velocity, but that's also the velocity right there at the end um, before, the, before it's caught, because the VX is not going to change throughout the entire flight in projectile motion. Okay, keeping that information, because this can be we're going to need that for this problem. Um, here it says, how long is a football in the air? So we have that information. We want to go ahead and determine the VIY component too, so we can make a Gibbons list. So we're going to do the opposite in the hypotenuse. We're going to go to sine. So opposite equals sine angle times hypotenuse. That's the 35 and the 25. Plug in our values and we get 14.34. And now we have our triangle done with our initial Y and our, our constant X. And we can make a Gibbons list. So we're going to determine um, the information we have from just from the start. This will be the problem. This will be the information for any question that would involve this material. So we have a VX is going to stay the same. We have an initial Y. And we know that it's going to be in the air, so the acceleration due to gravity is going to be a negative 10. We're going to use 10 negative because we're talking about down, whereas we have an up here. So we do have to um, call one direction positive, one direction negative. So for these problems, positive is going to, up is going to be positive, down is going to be negative. And left and right, we're not really concerned with as much because we're just going to talk about forward. So um, how long does a football, is a football in the air? So it's all the way until it is caught, and because all the way until it's caught, this is information right here that you see. This is important. If you know the VIY, when it's caught at the same height, the VFY is going to be the opposite. So now that's going to be down. We're going to re represent down by a negative. And we can figure out how long this takes so we can answer this question. So we're going to solve with the right acceleration equation. We don't, we're not, you don't have to worry about the VX here. It's not asking you anything about VX. We're going to just use all these y givens and when we do that there's an equation that goes with it vf equals vi plus at which rearranges to this one or, or specializes to this form if i want to go directly with the givens i have here but it's the same thing so you plug in you rearrange it or you plug it in and then rearrange it but when you do that um, you're going to have a vf which is a negative 14 minus uh you know 14.34 so this number is going to be pretty much double what it was divided by a negative 10 which will get rid of the negative and you get 2.87 seconds. So that's the answer here. Uh, and the football was in the air for 2.87 seconds. And for these problems, I'm just using this little cannonball, cannonball animation rather than the actual what's happening because the same thing's happening in any projectile motion problem. Okay, so the second question is talking about a cork shooting out of a campaign bottle uh, 22 meters at an angle of 19 degrees above the horizon. So we want to go ahead and get a picture going. We'll draw a little triangle. Make sure your vector anger, uh, arrows are drawn right. 22 meters per second, and it's 19 degrees above the horizon. And here the question is how far downrange does it does the cork land? But before we do that, before we even consider the question, let's go ahead and just write it out, figure out the, the Bx, which is the adjacent component. So cosine 19 times 22. So we have the adjacent hypotenuse, and so that gets us 20.80. And this, whatever value at what angle, is always going to be the hypotenuse. So you make sure when you're drawing these triangles right, that's the way it's going to be. So we get the 20.80, draw the triangle, uh, label it, add some, some numbers to it. It'll help you uh, analyze the problems and get them correct. And then we want to find this opposite side. So to find this VIY, the initial Y component, we're going to, it's the opposite. We have the hypotenuse, so we're going to take sine of 19 times the 22, offsetting of angle times the hypotenuse. And we get 7.16, and we're going to throw that over here. And we'll, we'll start off for our initial givens list with that information. The VX is 20.8. The VIY, the initial Y, is 7.16. And we're going to have a gravity pulling us down at 10, so this would be positive. That would be negative. And now it says, how far downrange does the cork land? OK, it's landing. It's going to land on the ground at the same level. Um, 
So it's going to have a negative VFY. Whatever this initial Y was, whatever this was, this is going to be the opposite of it. It's going to be negative. That will be the entire flight right here. So we go ahead and use a VFY of negative 7.16. And now we're ready to go ahead and um, we're solving for the question itself. Ask for how far down range. That's your VX. We're going to solve for T. We have enough information to solve for T here. We go to our acceleration equations, and that one from before, we're still going to use VF equals VI plus AT, or GT. Um, and then that equals, we rearrange it, plug it in any way you're going to do it, and we find the time here is going to be 1.43 seconds. So that's going to be 1.43 seconds here, but it's also going to be the time that it has to go forward. And now we can go to the x-axis, and we can pick our best equation, which is the only equation in the x-axis, x equals v times t, but specialized vx times t. And we just plug in our values, 20.8, 1.43, and we get 29.74 meters. So this cork is going to fly out 29.74 meters in this problem, and that would be the answer right here. Next question, we have Julie Ertz kicking a football or soccer ball with an initial speed of 10.2 meters per second and it's at a direction of 25 degrees above the horizon. So there's a picture of what's happening, 25 degrees above the horizon, 10.2 meters per second. What's the greatest height? So we're talking about how high this soccer ball is going to reach. But before we do that, let's go ahead and just find out our sides. We have our VX is going to be the cosine because it's the adjacent side. Once again, 9.24. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. Um, we're going to go ahead and solve for the, the opposite side so we know our initial VIY because that's going to be this right here. So we plug in our values, sine 25 times 10.2, and we're going to get 4.31 meters per second. We plug that in over here. Now we have this triangle drawn. We can use that to write out our initial givens. We're going to start off with a forward velocity of 9.24. We're going to start off with an initial upwards velocity of 4.31. It's going to be in the air, so we have our gravity. But now, let's see, the greatest height the soccer ball will reach. So we need to think about what do we need in order to get this. So we have to look at, think about the, what's happening. And at the top of an object's flight, its Y component is zero. So notice how that Y component disappeared at the top. So that's going to be a given here because we're talking about the greatest height. And the greatest height is always going to be at the top of the flight path when the Y velocity stops. So the X never stops, but I'm not concerned with that. So we have all the information. We don't even have to look at the x-axis, but it's good just to have there because we don't know what the question is going to ask anyways. We have all the information to pick out our equation, and the best equation that goes with that is VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AT, or 2AX, uh, but it's specialized this way, so it's using these exact um, variables. And we can just plug in our values. We've got 0 squared equals 4.31 squared plus 2 times negative 10 times Y. That ends up being 18.58 minus 20y. We cannot add minus 20y from 18.58. We need to go ahead and do something else. We have to add the 20y to both sides because we want to get 20y by itself. And so what's going to happen is you'll get this right here. You cannot, what students will make mistakes on is they'll take 18.58 minus 20 and they'll have like a minus something y value equals zero and that would equal zero even when you're done. That's not the right math. This is this is the number. This is something why I don't know what it is yet. So I have to I have to get it alone. I can do it two ways. I could subtract 18.58 and then I'd have two negative values. But either way, you're going to get to this. And when you do that, you get to your your height. Your height's going to be 0.93 meters off the ground. So it's not going to be very high. Next question: You use a hose to spray your house at an angle 40 degrees above the horizontal, and the water's leaving the nozzle with a speed of 28 meters per second. So this water is acting like a projectile. We want to find out how far from our house. We need to stand away to watch the highest spot. So that's going to be key to, to how our, our givens we can assume. We go ahead and draw out the triangle so we can figure out our opposite and adjacent and what it's going to solve for. Our VX is going to be the adjacent. So we do that cosine of 40 times the 28 and we get 21.4. Add that to the X X, uh, X side, the VX of the of the triangle, and then we're going to find the opposite will be which will be our initial upwards velocity component of this 28. 
And so we're going to do the 4 sine 40, obstinate hypotenuse of sine, sine 40 times the 28, and we're going to get 18 meters per sec. And now we're going to populate that triangle. And now we have a triangle with Vx there, Viy there. And we can use that to plug it into our givens list. And so we're starting off with the Vx there, the Vy there, Viy there, because it's going to change. And then we're going to have a G of negative 10, once again, going with positives for up and negatives for down. And then it says, uh, how far from your house should you stand to watch the highest spot? So it's asking you for an X, but it's also telling you about the highest spot. And what we know about the highest spot is that the highest spot, the final Y velocity is going to be zero. So we're just talking about just to this point. We don't care about anything here. We're just talking about just to this point right here. And at that point, that's going to be our final velocity because we're going to solve for this spot, spot right here. We want to find out the time at that spot. And if we can find the time there, we can use the time over here in the, in the x-axis later on. So we're going to find the time. We've used the equations that have the viy, the g, the vfy, and the t. And there's your equation that it, it leads you off to. vf equals vi times a t, or sorry, plus a t, which specializes as vfy equals viy plus gt. Same thing. Once again, it's from your 1D motion equation. Just get used to using those and just realize that, that they're the same thing. Rearrange your formula, do everything, uh, put everything in, and you're going to get 1.8 seconds. So now we know to get to this point, it's going to take 1.8 seconds. So let's figure out how far up, or sorry, that's, that's what we already did. We already found out how um, it takes one point. We, what we did was this, actually. We figured out to get to this point is going to be 1.8 seconds, and now we know how far we have to stand away, how far it has to go forward to get to that point. So opposite of what I said. We want this, we found this in the Y, and now we're trying to find this. So all we have to do is plug that T in over here. And then we have our equation we can use with X, V, and X, and T. Only one equation, constant motion equation, rearrange many, a couple different ways. And we're going to plug in our values. We have our 21 meters, 21.4 meters per, per second forward. And we do that for 1.8 seconds, and we're going to get 38.52 meters. So you'll have to be pretty far away from the house, 38.5. 52 meters um, is, a, is a pretty big distance. Okay, so that's that question. Now, number five, we're trying to make a field goal, and the uh, Falcons um, kicker kicks the football at 50, 32 meters per second at an angle of 45 degrees above the horizon. And the field goal crossbar is 5.64 meters tall and is located 20 meters down range. How much higher or lower than the field goal crossbar is a football at the moment that passes the crossbar? So here you have to realize, okay, what information do we use and what information do we not use? So the field goal crossbar, we're not shooting for the field goal crossbar. So this is really uh, not important right now, but it will be important later on. We know that um, it's located 20 meters downrange, and we can't assume that we are at the tallest point. So this is going to be one of those problems where we're not going to assume the VFY. We're going to go ahead and go another way. And then later on, we'll compare it to 5.5, 5.64, but we want to find Y at a certain point. But let's go ahead and just do the basics. Let's get the information from this 32 um, meter per second kick at a 45 degree angle. We're going to find our VX by taking the adjacent and the hypotenuse. We get cosine 45 times 32, and we get 22.6 meters per second. So we'll populate the X, the VX. Now let's go ahead and take, let's find the adjacent, let's find this opposite, or sorry, the opposite side, and we have opposite hypotenuse, which leads you to sine, and so we plug in our values, sine 45 times 32, and we're going to get 22.6 meters per second. So we have, we have those two values, we have everything we need to go ahead and think about the next steps, so no matter what the question was asking, we would start here every single time, but now we need to think, okay, well, it's going to be, the, the football is going to be 20.4, sorry, 20 meters downrange when we start to think about what the height is. So we don't know what the, what this VFY is going to be. We don't know, we can't assume it's going to, it's going to be negative that or zero because this could be any time during the flight. But let's go ahead and figure out, figure out how much time it's going to take. And this time that we find out here, we're going to go ahead and be able to use it there and then we'll be able to find the height at that time. So we go to Vx equals Vx times T. We plug in, we rearrange it, plug in our values or whatever, plug in your values, rearrange it. Either way, we're going to get 0 0.88 seconds. So that's how long it's going forward. Not very long at all. So it's pretty close to the, to the field goal. And that's also going to be a y-axis. So now we know we went forward for, we went forward for 0 0.88 seconds, not, a, not an actual distance. We went 20 meters, but it took that long. And now we're trying to figure out from there 
we just stopped right here. Now we're thinking, okay, well, how high are we at that point? Once again, we don't know where we're at. We don't know if we're at the highest point or anywhere else. We'll go ahead and take that information and we'll solve for y, keeping that time of 0.88 seconds. And that's going to lead you to this equation right here. So we have everything we need. And this unspecialized is y equals vi times t plus 1 half at squared. Same thing, specialized to use these exact um, letters as variables. You can plug in your values, you get all those values. Once again, vi is not zero. This is not a horizontal motion problem. It's kicked up at an angle. So we plug everything in, and when we get there, our answer, it's 16 meters. Now, we know how high the football is at that moment, and we just have to figure out how much higher it is than the crossbar. So this is nothing more than a subtraction. We take the, the, the height that the football actually is at, we subtract the, how high the crossbar is, and we figure out we know now that the football was 10.36 meters above the crossbar when at 20 meters um, down the field. Okay, so lastly, we have a question where you got Bob Gill, uh, Gill who's a stunt, uh, stunt bike, bike dri driver. He's a evil Knievel-like, and he's going up a ramp at 22-degree uh, angle ramp. He's jumping it at a speed of 40 meters per second. We know each car that he's going to have to jump is 1.7 meters. This has nothing to do with the actual meters he's going to jump. It's just telling us a little information, painting the scene for this picture. And this picture asks, what's the maximum number of cars Bob Gill can jump at a ramp speed of this, what we told you, is 40 meters per second horizontal uh, angle of 22. So we really want to find out how far he can actually jump. But before we start that, we'll start our normal way. Let's figure out the VX. So that's going to be the adjacent hypotenuse. The cosine of 22 times 40, we're going to get 37.1. So that'll be our constant Vx. And for our initial Vy, because that's going to change, we're going to go ahead and take the, the sine of 22, because we have, we're looking for opposite. Opposite hypotenuse leads you to sine. So we have sine of 22 times 40, and we get 15 meters per second. So his initial upwards kind of kick, his velocity is going to be 15 meters per second, while he goes 37.1 meters per second the whole time. So we have all our information. We're going to start our Gibbons list, and now we have to think, okay, we want to find out his maximum distance. So we want to find out the, the horizontal distance. He's going to land at the same height. And in order to do that, it would be very useful to have a little information, more information. Um, and so we're going to look at, for maximum distance, remember, maximum distance landing at the same height, if we know it was going up at 15, which we did here, we know it's going to be landing at negative 15 or down 15. And then we can use that to figure out the time it, the time he's going to be. So we're going to figure out how long he's going up and down, and that's the same time he has to go forward, which we can use in the x-axis. So we go to vf equals vi plus gt, because we have all our information right here for that equation. Once again, specialized from the 1D motion equation, it's really the same thing. And we rearrange it, plug in our values. It's going to go up at 15, go come down at 15. Remember, final is a negative, so negative, negative. It's going to, um, you're going to add 15 to 15. You'll have, uh, so we have a negative 30 over negative 10. We get three seconds when we, when we put that all in. So he's going to be going in the air up and down. It's going to take him three seconds, but also that is going to be the time we now know because now he's going to have three seconds to go forward at a constant rate of the 37.1. Once again, after we break everything down, the 40 meters per second is no longer uh, pertinent to us. We already broke it down into its components, so we can do this problem. So let's find out how far he can actually, how far he's going to land downrange. And so we get the x equals constant velocity equation, only one we never use, either that one or vx equals x over t, but this one's already set up the right way. vx is 37.1, the time is 3. We get 111.3 meters. So he's going to he's going to fly, man. He's going to go far. 113, 111.3 meters. That's that's larger than a football field. Uh, let's figure out how many cars he can actually jump. So there's him jumping. He's going all that way. Kind of dangerous. Um, I'm not sure if this is a very real problem, but uh, each car is 1.7 meters. So how many 1.7s can fit in that 111.3? So we go ahead and just take the total distance, that 111.3, we divide it by a single car, and we find out he's going to be able to jump 65.5 cars. And we're going to round that down to 65 because he would crash if it was 66 cars. He's not going to make it that length, so we have to round down. This is not just a regular rounding problem. We'll round down anytime because we're trying to find out. We want to make sure he clears that. 
so you might give the ramp a little leeway, but he's going to clear that many cars, and the answer here would be 65 cars. So that's that's some general practice in this uh, 2D angular projectile motion problems. Once again, it's, it takes a little bit more logic and thinking through these problems. It requires you to know the basics, the, the what it takes to get to the highest point, what it takes to get to the farthest point, and when you can't use that, figuring out where to start.